Hi, I'm Mike Fleischman. Um, you know, back in the day I used to be able to say, well, hey, I'm a painter, I'm a drawer, I'm an illustrator. I, but I, I work in cardboard, and it's kind of hard to classify, I guess. Uh, am I a collage artist? Am I a sculptor? I, it, it covers all kind of grounds, all kind of, all, all kind of layers. So, uh, but it's fun to say I work in cardboard, so that, and that's exactly what I do. I still draw, I still paint, because that involves, that's in, involved in the process of doing this cardboard art. Well, what's your background, Mike? My background, uh, I have a BS in, in, um, in art education, I have an MA in painting and drawing fine arts, and uh, I taught for many years, uh, while working up from uh, middle school, elementary school, high school, all that way, and finally, um, Teaching college was the, those were probably the last teaching gigs that I had. I'm a retired college art professor uh, and also a, a retired uh, freelance illustrator as well. well. How would you define creativity and at what age or what time in your life did you realize you were creative? Yeah, creativity, for me, it's, it's, it's something that drives me to, to, to make a mark, to make a stroke to think in a different way. Something that drives me to do something that don't really, the bottom line of it is that only I can do. Everybody, yes, I, everyone can draw, everyone can paint, even if you don't think you can. But uh, no one can paint and draw like me, no one can paint and draw like you. So creativity, that's what it is. It's something that spurs you on to do something different that is uniquely you. And in your life, when did you realize um, I don't know if it's if I would have called myself creative back then, but when I first realized, uh, I would do uh, comic books for my for my friends in in first grade. I used to love to draw the Flash comic books for my for my buddies, and I was always doing you know this whole thing. I guess got started with comic books, and I would do comic books. I was the comic book guy. They would come to me for for comic books. And now, what would you say inspires you or motivates you? Well, uh, for me, it's this stuff. Uh, it's, it's always been, when I, and you know, I'm going to say this stuff. What motivates me, it doesn't take much to motivate me. I'm very visually oriented. So I'll see something and I'll say, whoa, I'd like to do something with that. I'd like to do something taking off on that. Um, so the, uh, the cardboard stuff... Uh, really was based off of uh, 300 boxes that we brought that got us here from from Ohio to Delaware and I was the guy that found the boxes and tore down the boxes and in the process of tearing down the boxes I looked at this material and I thought this is too good to just throw out let's experiment with, with this let's see what we can do with this stuff so that's what got the whole cardboard thing going, I can tell you exactly. So this is your medium. Yes, it is. And you chose it because? Um, it's a wonderful surface to work on. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it, is, it, it accepts and handles paint and marker, colored pencil, just like a good watercolor paper or a good drawing paper. Um, it's, a different, it's a different kind of surface, of course, but it, it's really, I'm still drawing, I'm still painting. I am doing it on this different type of surface, though. And I'm also now, I guess it's kind of an excuse to buy all these esoteric scissors and, and markers and and glue sticks, and uh, it's, it's it branching me off into, into other material that I played with before, and I'm really, it's all, all part of the game right now. Is there, are there themes in this work? Well, yes. Um, I've always been really enamored, really taken with pipes and duct work, robotic kind of stuff, machinery, and that's really taken full force, you know, that's really going full force in this stuff. Um, there's not much, I'm, I'm starting to get into more, you know, I, I'm starting to bring kind of creatures into this figurative kind of thing. When I was a quote-unquote drawer, painter, I was 
I used to do a lot of figurative stuff. There were always figures in, in my work. I didn't do much abstract. Um, that started kind of snowballing, and it's you know led me to this. Uh, so, but now you can see I'm starting to bring in kind of robotic kind of themes, figures. Or there'll be faces that you'll be able to pick up. Maybe they're a little cartoony. I don't know, but you can start picking that up as you, if you look hard enough, you'll see all this this stuff you know popping up. What do you like about what you're doing? Um, the bottom line, on, 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 well, I was going to say the bottom line, but there's a real bottom level where it's the feel of the, the marker on the cardboard, that little scratchy, you know, little, it, you can feel it as you're drawing with it. And that just feels good. Uh, I love that little scratchy, you know, sound that it makes when you get a good, you know, marker on the right, on the right surface. Um, same thing with paint, that, that kind of whoosh as you move your arm in the paint. And it's kind of a wet, juicy paint. You can just feel it. goes up your arm right, right to your heart. It's, it's just a wonderful feeling. And so are there um, special or favorite tools now for this? Well, I have, uh, like I said, I, uh, <laughs> I have bought, it's an excuse to buy all these esoteric Japanese scissors that I get from a place called Jet Pens. Uh, and markers as well. Um, so yeah, there, I, you find the right scissors, you find the right marker, or markers in my case. I don't know if you can pan over, Joe, and you can see all the markers and scissors that are over there. Um, lots of markers, lots of scissors, lots of... Well now what kind of art do you most identify with? Well, I know what got me started. I mean, I was a painter. I loved to paint. Um, I can one of the very first painters I was really enamored with was was Franz Klein. Um, a, I can right off the bat. There's a Richard Diebenkorn is another one. Um, they come they come to mind immediately as painters that I still enjoy and I still love looking at their work. Is the artistic life lonely for you? No, not at all. No, not at all. Um, you're working alone, that's sure, that's for sure. But it does not feel lonely. Um, it never has. I mean, uh, as a freelance illustrator, uh, and now, and as a fine artist, uh, it's just something that I love so much that I can spend a lot of time down here. Um, Listening to music is great, um, so yeah, it's it's just uh, a wonderful, wonderful job to have. And are you creating for yourself or for to share with others? Well, I think you do both. Um, you, it, you know, the, you should paint and you should draw or you should make cardboard because you enjoy doing it because it's something that you love to do. You you hope that other people will enjoy it and will love it as well. But I think the bottom line is it's really something that you have to do, you know, for yourself. It should feel good for, for you. How about creative blocks? Always. It happens. Um, but you ride through them um, or you stop what you're doing and you move on to something else and uh, get away from the studio uh, and then come back. It's always been something I can get into a block, something will, you know, sniffing up and... Uh, you go upstairs, watch a little TV, listen to some music, take a walk, do whatever you need to do, and I can always come back, whether that's an hour or two later, that evening, the next morning, whatever. I can always return to it. Do you research before starting a project? Sure, always. I, I have a wonderful library. I've built up a wonderful art library uh, that I go to frequently. Yes, definitely. And... Do you feel like you have, are you setting new goals now? Um, and that's also, yes, definitely. Uh, one thing leads to another. You'll do a mark, you'll do a number of these elements, and then you hit on something and say, whoa, I really love that. Let's try that on a whole piece. Or let's take that somewhere else. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a, it's a, the goal is to just keep going and keep doing it because you're 
always going to come up with something, at least for me, I will always come up with something that, you know, that will motivate me to move on to something else. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, I think it's when uh, a lot of people ask, well, where do I start? Or my students would say, well, where do I start? Where do I begin? And I would tell them, you know, from what I heard, begin anywhere. Start, begin anywhere. Just start. Well, are you inspired in Milford? Is there a favorite place in Milford that inspired you or somewhere else? You're right here. That's the, <laughs> the in Milford. When we bought this house um, and found this incredible basement, this cavernous basement, my eyes lit up and I knew right away, oh, I want to take this corner. My studio is going to be right here. And this is the, the biggest and the best studio that I've ever had.